Hello, Internet. Welcome. Oh, I forgot my fan. Uh, w welcome back to our tutorial uh, series. Yeah, I don't want the fan on. It's incredibly hot in my house. I went outside. The temperature is finally dropping down below 70. <laughs> Thank God. And it's only 8 p.m. My God, it should be cooler than this by now. Um, oh, 7.51. I know some of you care a lot about precise numbers. But it's so humid and, and just sticky in the house. Anyway... Anyway, we're going to continue clearing out the lab. Um, we definitely want to recharge our jackhammer. I'm very hesitant to let that go for long periods of time, but the benefit of moving through the lab is that, uh, as we discussed many episodes ago, each movement is only a few seconds. Oh, giant wasp is bad. Uh, we should do something about that. But um, as we move, it's only a few seconds per movement, more on difficult terrain, which is what we saw when we moved over our seat. So we can turn this on, go loot a big chunk of the lab, come back up, and only uh, like 20 minutes might pass. So it's pretty easy to safely turn this on now. We do want to keep an eye on our battery charge is so bad. Uh, let's run this engine for a minute while we go deal with this wasp. We never talked about giant wasps. Wield the uh, gun, please. We never dealt with giant wasps before. Where are you? Oh, you're right there. Okay, um, giant wasps. There are also giant bees in the game. There are giant mosquitoes. There are dermat... Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups now. Dermatics as well. Um, dermatics are a little different because they inject parasites into your body. I don't know how I'm gonna edit that hiccup out. That's okay. Um, giant wasps in the early game will wreck your will kill you okay they are extremely dangerous they they um let's look let's look at the description check this guy out a gigantic slender bodied wasp with an evil looking stinger protruding from its abdomen its exoskeleton glowers with ominous red markings the wasp is quick for one it's it's pretty fast once it comes at you it will come at you now it doesn't seem to be hostile and it doesn't seem to have detected us, which is weird. Oh, it is hostile, but it has not detected us. They are, they're stingers, I think, when they when you kill them, they drop a stinger, or you, maybe you have to butcher them for it. But it can be used as a knife. It is huge. Uh, so just imagine, what was that in Futurama when Fry or Lilo, whoever gets stabbed in the abdomen by a, by a giant bee, and it's this long thing that actually penetrates their body? That's what I always imagine. In the early game, this thing will wreck you. Um, if you walk outside of your base on day one and you're near a swamp, um, wasps and a lot of the big insects occur most frequently at a swamp. We haven't seen a swamp, um, and they're not super common anymore, but they exist. Uh, and if you walk outside on day one, this guy's going to be faster than you. He's going to be dealing way more damage than you when they... Uh, poke you, some of them poison you, some of them insert parasites. Giant insects in general are things to be avoided. Now the big flies and the big um, big mosquitoes are like the least, least scary of those. But we've already seen, oh no, we haven't seen spiders yet in this playthrough. Spiders are incredibly dangerous for an early level character. Same with the wasps. Dermatics can cause you problems over time. So definitely, definitely be cautious approaching these creatures. So, rather than walking over there and getting into fisticuffs with a scary little monster, we are going to shoot it. Unfortunately, we're a little far away. He has vanished. Um, the other thing with flying creatures is that they can move up a Z level. So, even though, like, so think of it like moving up a floor above us. And when they do that, we can't actually see them really anymore, which can be problematic. We can't peek up, unfortunately. Um, we need something to brace ourselves against. Now, he's. A little too far away. You'll see it uh, auto targets up there to uh, the raccoon, uh, which we don't want. We want to fire at this wasp. He should be close enough at this point. Um, this is dictated by the range of our gun. We're not going to get good aim on him because we're pretty bad at shooting. Oh my god, not only did we hit him, but we killed him in one shot. Um, that is uh, another bonus. Oh, another wasp? No, it says giant wasp. I guess it just hasn't updated that it's dead. Um, that's another benefit of using the 5.56 rifle is that it is a pretty powerful round. You'll see it dealt 60 damage to that enemy. If we check the gun, uh, it must have been a critical. Oh uh, yeah, good hit. So we must have uh, criticaled 
that guy, so we just got a lucky roll. But you'll see its damage is about 42. It's a little less than the shotgun shells. If we remember our shotgun, it was dealing somewhere in the neighborhood of 55, so about 10 more damage. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good gun. Let's uh he didn't drop a stinger. We probably do have to butcher it. Let's um how long is this gonna take? We'll do quick butchery. It takes six minutes. Just a real quick pop through here. Uh no. We did not get a stinger. Is it not the wasp that gives a stinger? Or maybe it was removed from the... I don't know why it would have been removed. It's most likely the bee then. No, I thought it was a wasp. Whatever. One of them can drop a stinger, which can be used as a melee weapon. I would not recommend it, but it's doable. And again, uh, because it's a mutant creature, we actually got mutant meat, which we don't want. I do think I'm going to murder this raccoon up here uh, and see about getting some meat. Uh, well, do we want to do that? We never put a kitchen unit in this, so we'd have to start a fire. We did bring a brazier. Why don't we kill you? We're at normal weight. It would be nice to get some proper meat in our belly. So let's murder this raccoon. Uh, you'll see because it's such a small creature, it's hard to hit, so we're getting really bad aim. On the plus side, this raccoon is an idiot and will let us walk right up to him. So let's do that, uh, and then we will just murder him. Uh, right next to him, we should be able to get more or less to a full shot. Hit the raccoon for 61 damage. Once again, we, we criticaled him, and we got a full critical hit. He is dead, um, and we did so much damage to this creature, in fact, that he was pulped. I don't know if pulping reduces the amount of meat you get from the creature. We will full butcher because it's a small animal, so we can fully butcher it. We should get six-ish chunks of meat from him. Ten? No, we only got scraps of meat. That's right, we had this issue before with the raccoon. Um, I take exception with this. I don't know if this is because we pulped him. Maybe it's because our survival skill is really low. That contributes to how much meat you get. But like, I, I so I drive for a living a lot of times through the country. I see raccoons that are bigger than a lot of dogs that I see in my day-to-day -day life. Like we have a wiener dog at the house here. I would say I've seen raccoons that probably weigh more than my wiener dog. So they're, they're hefty animals, certainly bigger than people think they are. Um, so I'm a little disappointed we only got some scraps of meat. How's this engine doing? Okay, uh, let's leave this running. We'll turn on, no, don't drive, let go. Uh, we'll turn on the recharger for a little while and we'll go down and loot some. I'm gonna hang on to the gun. I feel, feel a lot better when I have a gun in my hands, just like every red-blooded American. Uh, we cleared out a CBM closet, so we're going to go back up there. Uh, we did talk about patterns in the lab stuff, and we'll see those more and more as we progress. What we're really looking for... Okay. So this lab will consist of a big square-ish area. Now, some of it won't be... It's not perfectly square. There will be some outcroppings and things like that. But for the most part, it's a relatively square, rectangular type area. It encompasses a pretty big space. What we're looking for primarily is to be on the outskirts of that. Now the interior is going to be primarily stuff that we've already seen. Uh, these two by two rooms, these big open areas, uh, the big open area with the generator. It's going to be a lot of those. On the exterior, there will be certain things that stretch beyond how do I how do I put this? So like let's pretend that this square represents this 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 map that we're on right now, this two by two room, this represents the entirety of the lab. It's a big, perfectly square um, example, but it's it is what we've got. So let's say this is the the lab right here. The interior rooms that we find are gonna be what we've seen already. A lot of these kind of mix and match pieces. If we get to the exterior, there will be special locations that only spawn on those exterior sections. So for instance, um, we might come to the very north end of the map of the lab and there'll be some doors there that lead us into an armory that has a lot of guns and a barracks that has a lot of um, clothing and, and basic um, soldier gear. Then if we, let's say, went all the way to the east, there might be another door here and this one might lead us to a big CBM closet. I'm sorry, we don't call them CBM closets. Um, we call them vaults. The CBM closet is this right here. Um, this is what we refer to as the CBM closet. A CBM vault will have, um, I mean, usually like six or eight CBMs in it. 
um, and it'll be it's a special thing. They can occur mostly anywhere, but again, a lot of the good stuff occurs on the exterior. And then maybe down here, we will have a, a special section that leads us to an auto dock, which has a you know some CBMs and some like uh, anesthetic and stuff in it. Uh, maybe at another point on the exterior, we would find a library which would contain a lot of books. And so a lot of the time you want to hang out on the exterior. So that's why I went north pretty much as far as we could go, uh, because it'll usually be set on one of the exterior walls. So we didn't find anything up north. Um, we don't want to go up here. This is where the fire vent was. So we're just going to continue exploring. And uh, again, turn on the, I dropped the flashlight. Of course I did. <sighs> Probably should favorite that so I don't accidentally drop it every time I go up. My voice is fading on me, which is weird because I took a break in between episodes. Unfortunately, this hazy cloud has taken up occupancy here. So we either need to walk through this poison cloud or we need to wait for it to dissipate. And gases don't really dissipate very much indoors. So I'm just holding down the wait key. Really don't want to walk through this. Okay. Cleared away there so we can walk through. It's a little hard to see in the darkness like this, but. So let's check on our vehicle. Batteries holding steady. How are you doing? 700 charge, okay. Um, the reason also that this was so slow before is that it was also charging all these batteries. So it was kind of breaking down how much charge was going into each object, which slowed things down. Give me my flashlight, please. Ah. <sighs> And yeah, let's favorite that before we press on here. You feel a little hoarse? I, you know, I woke up today and was like, you know what? Today I'm going to be productive. Uh, my goal was to record literally all day today and then had a bunch of, because <laughs> God, it's always this way. Had a bunch of things pop up that slowed me down. Like uh, we, in a previous episode, my neighbor uh, had some, uh, a landscaping company come by to weed whack and mow his lawn which slows things down, you know, when you can't record. And uh, I had to run to the dollar store and that's a whole to do right now because you got to put on your face covering and all this stuff. My governor has recommended everyone wear face coverings at all times. Um, so again, just really want to stress the significance of opening doors on an angle. Um, if we open a door while standing in front of it, you'll see we are exposed to a certain number of tiles, like this is actually quantifiable. You can actually count the number of tiles and say, okay, this ex you know, exposed me to X number of tiles. If we go in from the diagonal, you'll see it's a much narrower a area. We can actually count the tiles and say, okay, this one only exposed me to 15 tiles, whereas this exposed me to 30, whatever, you know, however many tiles. So always open on a diagonal. Every now and then you're going to interact with a room like this where it's a larger room, so you are exposed to more than you would like, but ultimately it's still less than if I open this door this way. So always, always on an angle, always peek. Um, anything with glass doors, you need to take special precautions. Um, if you're walking down a hallway and you discover that this is a, a whole glass area, you really need to be careful sometimes um, there is a particular type of glass wall where the turrets will spawn in the center of that room. So you really need to be careful when you're walking along and see glass like this. Um, and again, same thing. We're going to hug the wall because for all we know, there's a turret right here. It's not very likely. But if we just walk through the, the center of the room, we're suddenly exposed to everything over here and it could be something very dangerous. So we're just going to peek as we go here. Same thing here, you know, there could be anything down here we really don't know. So it's very important to peek as you go. I'm gonna grab pretty much all the books that we find here. Lab coats, um, if you're not wearing anything on your outer layer, which we're not, um, we're wearing currently an East Sappy ballistic vest, which, uh, how do I feel about this vest, internet? I don't know if I've ever told you, but I don't like this vest very much. Um, if you're not wearing, again, clothing is all layered. So for the uh, lab coat, the lab coat occupies the outer layer. If you're starting in a lab start, lab coats are excellent because they have 3.5 liters of storage. If you're looking for a little extra storage at a very low encumbrance cost, you can throw on a lab coat. If they fit, they barely have any encumbrance at all. Even when they don't fit, it's only five encumbrance. Um, so if we you know, wanted to grab, we could put on two of these and have a very minimal encumbrance, but still gain seven storage from that. 
Now, I don't really see the need to do that at the moment. Our torso encumbrance is tolerable. I'm going to throw one on just so we have a little extra storage and uh, whatnot. And of course, again, if you were doing a lab start, we just found a purse and a briefcase, both of which are good storage items. Unfortunately, they I believe they really encumber your arms. Is it a briefcase that encumbers your arms a lot? So, yeah, it's the strapped layer on uh, your arm and hand, and it's 30 encumbrance, which is god-awful. So I would not want to do that. But if you're desperate, it's a possibility. Here we see a toilet. So I did mention that it is possible to harvest um, water while in the labs and the main place that you're going to do that is right here at a toilet there are also um, labby like grow areas where there are troughs of water that you can take advantage of but mostly it will be the toilets so just checking around trying to make sure everything's clear before we press up too far looks clear check this room ah in fact this is exactly what i was just talking about it's a grow area. Here you will find a lot of seeds. You will find a lot of vegetables. Unfortunately, these are rotten. And uh, yeah, this is a great place to harvest a bunch of water as well. Um, so if you ever see those and you're looking for water, that's a great place to get it because these are infinite. I don't know if we ever mentioned that in a previous episode or not. Anything that is a water tile like this, um, a pool, a puddle of water in the forest, a lake, a river, those are infinite sources of water. Toilets or not, toilets contain X charges of water, um, usually around 25-ish uh, charges of water. This is infinite, so we could infinitely draw water from this tile and it would never, ever exhaust. So those are good for that. We're gonna check this book here. Principles of Effective Communication. That is a uh, speaking book. Check this door. Okay, got a radio in here, might have a battery in it. Two-way radio, no battery. Uh, AAA guide. This is a driving book. There are two AAA guides in the game. Number one is this book that we're looking at right now. This is a uh, driving book. It's not very useful at all. There is a second version of this. It has the same name, but the description is slightly different. I hope I'm remembering this right. Uh, the description is slightly different, and it, it hints that this book is actually... What is that book for? It's like an anarchist book. It has other recipes and stuff in it that you might want. So keep an eye out whenever you see a AAA guide. Take a minute to look and see what exactly it is. Again, desks don't show you their um, contents until you walk up to them. And you just peek here. I would love if you were a medium battery. Oh, it's disposable though. That's unfortunate. We would have liked a medium rechargeable battery. And we'll check this little closet here. Just blank space. I guess they do that just because they have extra space, so they needed to put something in there. I would really like to see something something be in here. Like, even if it's just shelves or something down here, I would like to see anything in there to make it more, like, roleplay friendly, because there's no reason there would just be an empty corridor. So this, again, we've talked about dangerous stuff. It's a little concerning because we can't see all the way down here. So with the light on... We're illuminated. If there was a turret way over here, it would be able to shoot us right now because it would be able to see us. Now, we would probably hear it say hostile detected, so we would know. But the safest thing to do in situations like that is to turn off your light for that, that particular moment um, and, and try to get close enough that you could get to a, a safe-ish place. There's really not a good place to do this, unfortunately. So we would just flash the light, turn it off, um, yeah, I don't know that there's a super safe way to do that, but so we'll check. Oops, shouldn't have walked in front of that door. Could have got us killed. Another teleporter room. This one with just a screwdriver. Another little crematorium area. It's peculiar that this does not have a door attached to it. Um, usually you find these rooms in sets of, of four. So I'm not sure why we can't see anything to our north here. Uh, we will check here. Okay, so this is a special area. Let's, uh, oh, I thought you could see through this door. You can't. Some zombie dogs on the loose in there. They're not going to be able to break. Actually, what kind of door is this? Yeah, they can break that. Um, so they'll be able to break through that. This is not a special area. I thought that it was because I saw this green tile. This is just another uh, of these three by three rooms that we saw before. So there'll be a room. Um, to the north here, 
to the north here, 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 and unsurprisingly here. Um, why don't we, because the dogs can break this door down, why don't we shoot the dogs? Why not? Now, with firearms, which is something we discussed previously, why, why can't you shoot this dog? Is it going to hit the uh, rubble? Nope. Okay. Um, we've discussed with firearms before. Oh, it's a locked door underneath the rubble. I see. Okay. Um, I would like to smash this corpse. I don't really have anything to get in there. It'll be fine. We talked about guns before. They do make noise. Now, in the confines of the lab, that's not a super big deal because a lot of the enemies will not be able to break down some of the doors that block their path. And with so many walls and doors, it's unlikely that enemies, like we shot a shot, there could be enemies over here that would like to migrate towards that shot, but there are so many walls and doors in the way that they'll likely never come over here. So shooting in a lab is not really a big deal. Um, and plus, the turrets do it constantly. Anytime a turret sees an enemy, they will fire. So definitely be careful here, because we don't know what's around this corner, really. Um, you can walk on these railings as well. So just going to keep peeking. A lot of this stuff is obscuring our vision, which makes me a little uncomfortable. Again, most of the time turrets won't spawn in areas like this, but you never really know. Um, and again, some glass doors can be seen through, so that's something to really keep in mind. We'll head into this little crematorium area. I assume that this is supposed to be like a crematorium. I really don't know what else it would be. I, you know, any of these rooms could have contained a turret. I don't know if we ever expressed that. Every one of these rooms has the potential really to spawn a turret in it. Um, same with the 4x4 rooms, uh, like the, the teleporter rooms, for instance, can spawn with a turret. The barracks can spawn with a turret. Basically anywhere can spawn with a turret. So it's really important to peek. I know we haven't seen any yet, but I'm really trying to stress it as much as possible, saying it multiple times an episode, because you will be killed. If you don't take the lab seriously, just a weight doesn't seem, or a scale rather, it doesn't really do anything. You could craft a basic laboratory analysis kit. I don't know what that is, but we'll take it. Uh, I've never seen a laboratory analysis kit before, but sounds important. Barracks, not seeing anything. Nothing really in barracks that are going to interest us. This is a good place to get basic clothing, um, but not really stuff we care about. Cotton duster, no thank you. Undergarments, no thank you. Continue. Ah, see, here we found a room. This is the most common room that you will find a turret in. Make sure we're not moving. Okay. Um, this is the Crows 2 turret, M249. This is the 556 turret. Uh, or 223 turret. I think the M249 is a 223 gun. Again, those are interchangeable calibers. Um, this is the most common room you will find a turret in. It will be a single little shelf like this. Uh, there will be a turret on it, and there will be a terminal nearby that you can interact with. We're going to back out. We're going to turn off our light. We're going to verify that there are no lights around us, because again, sometimes there can be lights in the lab. And if we turn off our flashlight and there's a light here, we still will be lit up and the turret will be able to shoot us. Unfortunately, or rather fortunately, I see. Why can you see me though? We're in a very dark tile. He's not supposed to be able to see us. We have light over here, but that should not allow him to see us. We're going to step back. We're going to save the game. And we're going to test what this is all about. He can no longer see us. I, it says very dark, but he obviously could see us there. So it looks like the turrets seeing you in the dark has maybe not been fixed. Because we're one, two, three, four, five, six. We were six or seven tiles away in the darkness, and it's listed as very dark, but he could still see us. So definitely be careful about that. Um, I don't understand why he could see us. There was a bug where they were seeing you in very dark tiles. I thought that had been addressed. Looks like it may not have been. Either way, we're going to murder this turret. Boop. And uh, we killed him in one shot. 
And now we can safely move in here. And once again, 15, 1600 rounds of 556 uh, ammunition. So we just doubled our ammo capacity and we've only used five rounds of what we had already harvested. Now this terminal, let's save and we'll interact with this terminal. This terminal is a log console. I'm not 100% on what this does. I think this is the one. So there are a lot of consoles in the lab. They mostly do things that make sense. So like in the CBM closet, wherever that was, I don't remember where it was here. This terminal will unlock this CBM closet, right? It makes sense. It's right there next to it. If you're in a uh, barracks and you find the terminal, it will open the barracks door. It's pretty straightforward for a lot of stuff. This log one, is this the one, if you succeed, it reveals nearby labs? I don't really remember. We're, I mean, again, we're not gonna mess with the consoles. Our computer skill is zero. Um, and we are not going to mess with this. You might say, oh, why don't you try to level your computer skill by hacking? It would literally take you hundreds and hundreds of computer hacks to level up your computer skill uh, that way. It's really only effective to level computers by reading books. And again, even at level seven, level eight, you're, which is like as high as you're gonna comfortably get, because I think the book, the highest tier book takes you to eight or nine, I think. Um, so you're not really gonna get more than that. And even at those skill levels, even at six, seven, eight levels, you're still going to fail pretty frequently. And I just think that that's, it's too dangerous. There's so much bad stuff that a, uh, a terminal will do if you fail. So we're gonna take this ammunition back upstairs. If we check our inventory, you'll see we're carrying about 126 pounds. The majority of that is the ammunition. So we're gonna go upstairs, drop that off. Uh, we know this is all relatively safe, so we can walk through here without too much issue. Um, you'll see this is illuminated here. I'm not really sure why. I guess there's a light under one of these tables or chairs or something. I don't know if it would show up in that menu or not. Overhead light right there. Um, so this would be dangerous if we were trying to uh, sneak through here because when we came through with our flashlight, we obviously could not see that light and know that it was there because we were lit up by the flashlight. Anyway, let's go out here, turn our vehicle off and um, drop off our new ammunition. We're gonna go ahead and immediately unload it because there's no reason for us to take the linkage, um, the, the whole belt with us. There's no reason for that because we're never gonna use the linkage for anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the linkage. The only thing we would use that for is our turret. If we look at our turret, I didn't know this is a 762 turret. M240, M240. It doesn't, oh, it is 762, it says right here. So that's obviously a different ammunition. So we're gonna drop our, oh, did I not unload all of them? Why, uh, oh, I dropped some ammo. I guess we didn't have space for all the ammo. Uh, we're gonna drop all this ammo. We'll go ahead and reload our SIG while we're here. And we can check our vehicle. Still hovering at 40 some odd percent. That's because most of it's going into our jackhammer. We actually did not spend that much time you know what? Give me these scraps of meat. Why don't we cook them? They've been sitting out in the sun for a little while, but it's not that big of a deal. So we'll cook and eat these scraps of meat since we're hungry. We'll go ahead and deploy our brazier inside. Cooking and eating will take up a little bit of time um, and give our car a chance to, to recharge. So let's get the brazier and we will pop inside and deploy the brazier and smash, don't really wanna smash with my only good 5.56 five, gun. Don't really wanna smash with my nice, uh, with my nice spear either. So we'll come in and get the, uh, we'll drop all this stuff. We'll come in and get the home wrecker, keep the scrap of meat, scale we can drop, hose, pipe. I just picked the pipe up because, let's grab the home wrecker and we'll use that to smash and gather some wood, wield, Home wrecker. This is the same thing we've done at our base many times is uh, harvest wood here. Haul that all into a pile. Mark a firewood source. Firewood source so that the fire will automatically refill as necessary. We will grab a plank, throw it in the brazier. 
Again, make sure you activate the brazier. If you just drop the brazier, it will not count as a fire containing item and you will burn down wherever you are. In the lab, fires don't really spread because of the concrete walls, but um, just like with the fire vent, it will make this room intolerable to live in if uh, a fire burns out of control. Say we, we burnt down that whole shelving unit that was here. This would get so hot in here that we would not be able to safely be inside. So just be aware of that. Um, we marked firewood. Let's go ahead and cook. Oh, I didn't bring a pot. <sighs> That's the other thing I forgot to bring. I knew it. I knew I forgot. Ugh. Okay. Um, a pot is needed for boiling water, which is something we would have needed to do if I had not brought water with us. And for cooking a lot of things, you need a pot or a pan. Now, scraps of meat might be doable with a food... Um, what, what do they call that? A food cooking tool. So the fact that we have a spear, we can just basically stick it on our spear and cook it over the fire. Obviously, we can't do that when we're trying to boil water. Obviously, we can't do that if we were trying to cook uh, like pasta or something like that. But for the scraps of meat, we can do that. Let's go ahead and make all of them. It takes three minutes. Store and inventory. And we'll go ahead and eat basically all of these. 500 calories, nothing to sneeze at. And that should fill us up pretty well as well. We'll pop out here, drink from our cache of water. We also found an apple. Go ahead and eat the apple. And we're looking for water. Jugs of clean water. Drink, drink, drink. And we are no longer hungry or thirsty. Check the vehicle. Hovering right around that charge. Barely charged at all. Okay, uh, I think we should probably call the episode here. And moreover, I think that will be it for me today. I did not get nearly as much done as I would like. Um, but it is what it is. I think five episodes. One, two, three, four, five, six episodes. I mean, whatever. I should I wanted to do more. That's okay. Uh, it's eight thir All right. So that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. We will continue looting the lab. This is something that's going to continue over the course of the next five to ten episodes, to be honest with you, if we're going to go full looting. Because uh, we do want to get to the bottom so we can talk about lab finales and why they're so significant. We will talk about bionics as we get them. Mutagen we will discuss as we see mutagen. Um, Autodocs, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be in the lab for us to talk about. So... Even though it can be a little boring to watch you very painstakingly go through the lab very slowly and cautiously, ultimately it's a very va it's one of the best value propositions in Cataclysm. The more time you spend looting the lab, the more bullets you're going to get, the more CBMs you're going to get, the more materials you're going to get. It's so important to hit a lab when you have the opportunity. So we're going to be doing that for a while. So for now... Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the series. If you did, maybe consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. I just checked today. The first episode in this series has over 1,200 views, which is substantial. Uh, I think the best thing on my channel is around five or 6,000. Um, and that's those are still very good numbers for me. I usually do like 100 on these episodes. It's usually like 40 in the first 24 hours or so, and then it usually bumps up to one or two or 300 uh, within the first couple, like month. Um, so, and we've been doing this for two months, internet. We've been recording basically an episode a day for over two months at this point. So getting a lot, getting pretty far in here. So if you enjoyed the episode, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Just leave me a comment. Let me know how you like things. And uh, I will be back with more tutorial content in the near future. And that's going to do it. So thanks for watching. See you next time.